Welcome to the Secrets of the Lac du Sally Trail podcast. Hear from Chris Stowers and Danny Wenshikoy on the behind the scenes experience of making the documentary. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Stowers. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Wenshikoy. I'm the radio host and the travel writer in Taiwan. In today's episode, we'll focus on the nature that we encountered during our walk along the Lacanus Selu Trail. Lacanus Selu Trail. Yes. Thanks mm. for pointing that out, Dan. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You have to because uh, mm. a lot of people might be misunderstanding the, what is uh, Lacanus. Yes, yeah, because yeah. it's written in English as uh, Racknus. Right. So, and if you say that to people, they don't often understand what you're talking about. Not at all, uh, yeah. Not many people recognize this trail. Right, so that's why we have to specifically say again, mm-hmm. Lacanus. Lacanus. Yes, they're based on the, from the two different languages combining tribes, together. Indigenous right? Yes. The indigenous people. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, Lacanus, which means is a camphor. So camphor, the, yeah, tr- camphor. the tree. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, Say Lu. In Hakka, mm. it's a small raw oh, trail. Like a Shaolu in Chinese, so right. Se Lu, Se Lu. Right. Mm-hmm. right. So you have to say it slowly. And uh, in, in fact, as you walk the trail slowly, yeah. you say the trail so, slyly, syllable by syllable. Lacanus, Lacanus Se, Lu. Se Lu. That's a nice way of Yes, nice, of, right? Yeah. yeah. Fun fact, Lacanus is the term used by the Saisha and Daya tribes to refer to camphor tree. And Se Lu means small path in the Hakka language. Okay, so Chris, as you are the photographer, ah, right? So what do you think about this time? We, we have been doing this uh, documentary. And we, mm. We've been to so many different kind of trail. Okay, it's one trail, mm-hmm. apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about 400 kilometers in total. But mm-hmm. it, 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 it starts or ends in Taoyuan County and goes down to Taichung County. So right. it depends which way you do it. And there are various routes that... It, intertwine with each other and other routes that come up from the lowlands into the hills Mm -hmm. because this trail uh, system of trails was used principally to export camphor wood which is where it got its name from right and Mm -hmm. later on tea from Mm -hmm. the mountain areas down to be exported from the seaside from the coastal areas Mm -hmm. so what you find it wasn't exactly what i was expecting to find Mm -hmm. um the, the, the trail is quite jungly, but it's very <laughs> varied. So the type of jungle varies. And yes. Sometimes within one section of the trail, uh-huh. you can go from um, thick vines and overhanging f- giant ferns, and suddenly yeah. you're in a bamboo forest, a bit like oh, in yeah. Japan. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and th- the transition from one to the other is a bit mm-hmm. disturbing. Right. Actually, um, normally this is because you're going over f- into a different microclimate. Mm-hmm. Uh, from one valley to another, or you're going up to, into the different tree levels, so you mm-hmm. get different types of trees. Mm-hmm. So as a photographer, um, I don't usually do landscape photography <laughs> or nature oh, really? photography. Okay. No, no, mm-hmm. I usually shoot pe- so this people. So this time for it's, you is uh, kind of like a challenge, right? Yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. not a norm- I'm not a walker either usually. Mm-hmm. Normally I cycle instead, but you couldn't cycle this trail, could you? It's too, it's too rough, it's too mm-hmm. steep, it's too slippery. Um, a lot of the time you're holding onto bamboo or vines just to keep yeah. your balance and walking up these slippery stone, <laughs> stone staircases that people have reconstructed. But mm-hmm. they're actually still reconstructing, aren't they? Right. A, a lot of the, mm-hmm. of the route. Um, for me, the interest, uh, along with the nature, was also arriving at um, isolated villages mm-hmm. and townships along the way that still to this day, you would have trouble in finding some of them by road. Mm-hmm. But if you're walking along the trail, you come out into a little hamlet somewhere, right. which seems frozen in time. And then the people you meet in these places are really quite mm-hmm. uh, unique. And mm-hmm. Okay, there's an aging population. Uh, many of the younger generation have gone to the big city. Big city. But mm-hmm. quite a few people are actually coming back. They, they, they oh, yeah. realize uh, they, actually, yeah. nowadays in Taiwan, it's quite popular. Mm-hmm. It's like a, mm-hmm. a lot of young generation. Mm-hmm. They might study in the big city or maybe a or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then they came back. And came back is like uh, they're trying to do is to get back to the so, community. So now, what thing is... Mm. To me, I think that's a very good idea. So they got a different taste of life when they were overseas and they came back yes. here and they view Taiwan f- right. with an outsider's point of yes. view, maybe. One thing is mm. like uh, uh, when, when they study abroad, when they study mm. in the big city, they just realize that, you know, how lucky they are, you mm. know. Their family had uh, such a beautiful Hakka culture, you know, mm. back in the hometown, something like that. And secondly, you know, they might bring better like a new knowledge or new mm. like a skill something like that mm. to helping the 
you say time still the kind of <laughs> hacker community, you know, can develop something new. Yeah. Yeah, the hackers have always been, I think, very adaptable people. They had to be. Uh, we have you know, to because, be. Yes. Uh, you didn't get the best choice of land when it right. came to sort of. Uh, mm. Uh, I wouldn't like to say colonizing, but taking over and uh, making mm. the land of Taiwan uh, you know, profitable from from mm -hmm. uh, growing things. Mm. Uh, you, you were pushed up a little bit into the hills yourselves, mm -hmm. and in doing so, the indigenous tribes that were already living there were pushed up even further into the mountains. Yes. And so everyone's had to adapt to survive in this scenario. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, time. you know what? It's very interesting. Um, depending on what you, uh, what is your perspective, you know, for me, yeah. it's like uh, um, when I was a kid, I just, I was saying that it's not a good idea living, you know, in the mountain. Mm -hmm. The, the mm -hmm. condition, everything is quite poor. It's not so good. And you kind of like envy that you know, people live in the town center or something mm -hmm. like that. Sure. But when you grow up, you realize that that's a different thing. You know, especially nowadays, uh, you might live in the city, but you you also feel like this is a modern style jungle. Yeah, you know? it's a life is a rat race. Yeah, yeah. so you, you kind of like, a, for myself, it's kind of like a remind me of how lucky I am, you know, and you have to live in this natural, well, beautiful. Yeah, you can get back to nature. Right. You're lucky you have that opportunity. Right, especially this time, remember that, that mm -hmm. uh, as a photographer, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely, I believe that when you, uh, like, uh, went to the the first one in the Beibu, you mm -hmm. see the, the, your, the home tea, your hometown, Be yeah, Beipu my my, Be uh, my hometown. County. Yeah, you see the tea plantation yeah. and landscape. Mm -hmm. That one is a different thing. And the second, uh, we went to the Miaoli. Mm. You see the Lao Guan Dao, uh, which means they had the bamboo the tunnel. Bamboo tur they turn yeah, out so the different. Like a, yeah, it's like a river throat flowing right. through the bamboo. Right? Yeah. yeah, and the last one is like uh, we went to the Taichung. Mm -hmm. We met the guy is a Wallace. Mm -hmm. And oh. he took us in his hill. I'm glad we're talking about Wallace. <laughs> yeah, what a character. Is, yeah, the man, oh, yeah. yes, yeah. He's, uh, I like him. Yes, yeah, so we're standing on the hill and yeah. look over, and he started talking about the story and the history. Yeah, 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 At that point, I was like, uh, all the landscape turned out so differently. Well, right? yeah, so, Wallace what do you is, think? Wallace is um, an elder of the Dai, Daya. Mm -hmm. uh, Taya. Uh, Taya, um, Daya, Daya. Indigenous, indigenous tribe, mm -hmm. and he's a historian. Mm. He's written about, about 20 books. Oh yeah, more uh, than that. A lot of them are about uh, mm. sort of fictional accounts of life in his area. And he was looking out across that landscape mm. um, and, and revisualizing it mm. as it was when the Hakka settlers first came into his valley and he pointed down to where they came from mm. and then his ancestors were pushed up into the hills mm. uh, so there was like a that was a battlefield mm. in in some ways back a mm. hundred or so years ago mm. um, but then we met uh, a few days later Ko mm. Wen who's mm. this uh, young, young oh, girl and she's a yes she's mixed from a Hakka and an indigenous tribe yes. um, parents mm. right? yes so, mm. is that correct yes mm. Mm. Yeah. Sasha Saisha, Saisha tribe, Saisha uh -huh. tribe and the Haka, and yes, Haka people, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, uh, and she uh, actually her project was very interesting because yes. she was um, with the help of Mr. Doe, her, her uh -huh. uncle. I don't know if her real uncle or just a, a, an elder of the tribe. Anyway, he was helping her to map out um, the the area and find or retain the original mm. tribal names mm. for settlements. Some of those mm. settlements had disappeared. You right. can see like uh, um, a, a wall of stone where a rice terrace used to be or the remains of an old house, but mm. nobody was living there anymore. Mm. But she was, whilst Mr. Doe was still alive and had his memories active mm. in his mind, she oh, was like a... That's a, very valuable. You know? She was doing an anthropological yeah. research, really, mm. and mapping it down uh, as an app, actually. So it's all, it's all very modern and high-tech. Right. Um, mm. She's not like mapping a, a, mm. a, a written, inscribed... Uh, family tree on some mm. turtle turtle shell or something. Mm. She's actually doing this online mm. as, a, as, a, as an art project, wasn't it? Uh, but she's walking these trails and she's also getting back to nature and people would ask her, why are you doing this? Yeah. <laughs> You're mm. living a nice life in Taipei. Why do mm. you come out here and mm. suffer the mosquitoes? <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah. thing is like, you know, when he told me that it's like, a, look at me right now, you know, mm. I stay in here, you know, every day, you know, for me, it's like, a, a, no stress. You know, mm. and also with the nature together. Mm. So it's like a, I'm I'm so envy. <laughs> really, you want yeah. to get back to your roots too? Well, it's just I don't know. I can yeah, do it. Baby is a nice town. Right? Baby is nice yeah. though. Yeah. 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 But the thing is, like at this time, 
you see the landscape, people, mm -hmm. and culture, yeah. and you also took a lot of picture about the uh, Hakka cuisine. Yeah. Yeah. So four <laughs> different kind. Yeah. So tell me I, about it. Oh, for me, it's all about the people. Uh huh. Because people actually make the landscape. People. Um, make the food, yes. people eat the food, people mm -hmm. are working in, you know, as long as you have a landscape there and can put, place a person in it either as the sub, main subject or as a, just as a, a sort of a, a feature to give me a, mm. a sense of scale, mm -hmm. then I'm happy. It's, if a landscape doesn't have people in it, mm -hmm. I feel that there's something missing somehow. Mm. So the good thing is that the Lacanus Sailor Trail is still in most areas quite populated. Oh, yes. Right? It's not mm. totally forgotten about. Although sections are overgrown and you need a professional guide at the moment to, to, mm. to exactly find your way along yes. it. Most mm. parts you can actually do by yourself. Well, right? I would say they're probably like in the past three years, the government tried to try to do it. So but, ask a lot of different kind of profession, they come mm. in, join this project to try to make it happen. So you well, see there's some of the trail, they can't, even though they have the QR code there. Yeah, <laughs> so you yeah, go no, there, you just amazing, scan, so they'll tell you the you story. Can, you can learn about the yeah. history. But some of the, remember we Good. went to that one, it's in Long Tan. Remember that they have the, it's because we are exactly in the right season. So we see the, oh, the tom, tom flower. Tom Rosen, yeah. Wow, the Tom Rosen, that was so beautiful, yeah, that right? Was falling like Yeah, because I saw you was it, like standing there, yeah. taking the picture all the time. Just like, yeah. I was like waiting and waiting, you still, I said, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. And one go. time, <laughs> one time, you was like yeah. waiting for the another uh, well, like a passenger. They went. Yes, yeah. yeah, so well, see, that's the whole thing. I, it, the scene was great, but all it needed was a person to walk through. Right. It. And we couldn't have you because I had you in a lot of shots. So I needed yeah. somebody, you know, really. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a fake picture, you know. Yeah. And yeah. they were off looking at something else and taking no, their own pictures it's, it's, or something. It's or, too or, beautiful, <laughs> but then so a chat. Uh, then so they was like taking the picture. I walked by just like they tried to selfie or like taking uh, picture each other like. They're having such a fun over there. Right, it took mages yeah. to come into my picture, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the whole idea. You need the people in the picture to give it some... Right. You, know, you have to see the joy in their faces mm -hmm. or, you know... Mm -hmm. Just the scale of the size of the of the scenery and yes. how much of the of the shot is actually taken up with these tong blossoms. Mm -hmm. We were lucky. I mean, we they, are very they, lucky. they only yes. fall mm -hmm. in May usually. Normally, uh, it's normally. pretty much oh, like April, happen in the like a late April to mm. like a, um, early May or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. we timed that well. Oh yeah, so we're lucky. Yeah. Fun fact, Tung Tree Woods' economic value was an important resource in helping many Hakka families. That's the main reason that the Hakka have deep feelings and heartfelt gratitude toward the Tung Tree, the mountains, and nature in general. But not all of the trail was like that, was it? I remember at some point <laughs> scrambling. There was Mr. Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee. And Lee Cha Chi. Oh, his, that his, one. I was like, his, remember his, we're always talking about that. Are we yeah. there, yeah. Are we there, yeah. How do you say yeah. that? How do you say that oh, in Hakka? In Hakka, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I I'm going forget. to teach you some, some Hakka lesson. Okay. <laughs> Are we there, yet? Yeah. Are we there, yet? Yeah. That's very useful. Endeosa. Endeosa. Do man. Do man. Endeosa. Endeosa. Do man. Do man. Are we there, yet? Endeosa. Endeosa. Do man. Do man. Yes. Mang. Mm. Do mang. Or if, maybe you can cut it short, just me, like I said. Write that back down again. Yeah. Because, uh, Do mang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to use this a lot. So, don't, don't, um, do mang is like a questioning. Yeah, it's yeah. like a questioning. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Are yeah. we there? Yeah, there, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We were never there yet, were we? No, it's always, oh, no. Oh, no, no, we've still got yeah. more to go. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's actually a landscape architect. That's his profession. He actually helps design national parks. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so he was looking at that from a, his professional point of view. Mm -hmm. That section, it wasn't the whole trail. It's just a, uh, maybe a 15-kilometer section of trail. It took us about five hours to walk right. here, didn't it? Mm -hmm. um, hacking through the bamboo oh, with machetes yeah. mm -hmm. and getting cut up. You know, somehow, you know, when I, just like a, I was like mm -hmm. hiking with, you know, mm -hmm. with him, I, I just realized that he he's like an Indiana Jones. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> we all tried our headbands on, didn't we? To right. stop the, they work, though, to stop the sweat. But mm -hmm. The last time I had a headband was like listening uh. to Bon Jovi in 1986. <laughs> bon Jovi. <laughs> it took me back to my youth. So you can yeah. go to uh, Laka Nus Trail and, and, and uh, sing in your rock and roll. <laughs> exactly. I relive my past life. Yeah. Uh, no, so, but the, 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 this, the nature there was just, mm -hmm. um, I think, on that section of the trail, it was quite severe. 
But in other parts of the trail, it was more like a country park. It was oh. more, it, you know, we could stroll along without slipping up too much, yeah. without getting, mm. uh, you know, bashed and bruised by bamboo shoots. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was very pleasant. And you could imagine there maybe taking your family and walking yeah. on that section, like in mm. Guangxi, right, beside the, oh, the, Guangxi, the river the in one? Guangxi. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's the one with the QR codes. Yeah, that one is with the QR code. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a short section, and mm. it's obviously uh, like a beginner's stage or mm-hmm. just to let you into it yes. mm-hmm. slowly. But Guanxi itself is an important yes. mm-hmm. settlement, right? There's well, because the, in Guanxi at that time, I would say there is a um, in the like a tea industry. Mm. It's like a golden tea, mm-hmm. this kind of er, mm. you know, age. So, so it was, that's right. it was, it's at the end of the, the trail, really, isn't it? Guanxi It's where the tea would come down to. Right, right. And then mm-hmm. they amassed it there. Isn't there? Like, there was a museum there. Was that that oh, place? Oh, that's a, like, yes, a black tea museum. Black tea museum. Yes. Not, not mm. the Dong Because Farmer now there, a lot of people don't know that back in like uh, 50 years ago, some. Mm. At that time, Taiwan is uh, the most important, you know, Exporter. I mean, expo- or, or, yes, or um, for the black tea you know, yeah. in, the, in the whole world. I, yeah. yeah, they had the stencils up on the wall there of all the mm. places oh, that yeah. they would, and it mm. was it, it was global. You know, mm. you'd stencil on the side of the tea crate. Yeah, I saw uh, London. Aden, yeah. London, mm-hmm. you know, Osaka, all around the world, this tea mm. was sent just from a little town of Guangxi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just incredible. I asked but, the guy, uh, the guy told me that, you know what, uh, they used to be, it's, it's kind of like a play. It's like, a, for example, this a whole box they're going to ship into the London. So that's why they just put on the 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 wood. They uh, they started use the 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 painting mm-hmm. pen. So and they take out the the, the ball. stencil. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you will see that uh, London, the world is coming down to the to the wood. Onto the wood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah painted so, onto it. Yeah, mm. so that's right. But yeah, the whole industry has just gone now. And yeah, it's gone now. Yes. And the tea plantations themselves have gone back to nature, mm-hmm. haven't they? There's, you can't really see much evidence of where those tea plantations yeah. were. They're yes. kind of overgrown, or in some cases they've been taken over by... Well, in Miaoli, they have strawberry now. Strawberries. Oh, yeah, are, strawberry it's like, everywhere. Where did that come from? Who, who came back with that idea? Yeah. They, make the, they grow these uh, yeah. giant strawberries, mm-hmm. and probably somebody went to, I don't know, Europe mm-hmm. and came back yeah. with this idea, OK, guys, we all got to change and grow strawberries. <laughs> And you know what? Actually, for me, I was like, uh, it was so interesting because uh, remember we went with uh, Mr. Pong. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He told us uh, what that way. Um, I was to see the, the temples, right? the shrines, the Bagong. Uh, oh, shrines. the Bagong was, shrine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. you see that whatever the Hakka people, you know, you will find the Bagong. You know, which, which is uh, our the, the, the goddess of land. Yeah, yeah, the goddess of land. You land. know, yeah, uh-huh. that was uh-huh. quite different. Yeah. And so we are lucky because now a day the bagong, the shrine is yeah. became quite glow, <laughs> and uh, it's mm. as people get richer, they, exactly. they build more elaborate shrines. Right. Uh-huh. But, but with him, we found. Um, and this is really getting back to nature. Yeah, huh? One of them was just a giant camphor tree, wasn't right. it? I mean, you remember how oh, far we had to go up you know to what, find you know that what, tree? That one is, My, to me, is so it's touching. It's really rare. Yeah, yeah, but it's so touching because uh, you see that uh, when, when, when he told me that actually we don't really see the bagong, but no. they said because when the tree became bigger and yeah. bigger, yeah. embrace the the bagong, you know, right. the inside the tree is the the actual it's, statue of the god, right? Yeah. Yeah. And just and it's a massive. That's the biggest living yeah. camphor tree. Exactly, that I exactly. Saw. That's so, why it's just like when I was yeah. standing there, it's just. Give me that kind of feeling and the message just like uh, you mentioned that it's like a now a day, you know, maybe in the past, you know, we, 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 we might because of land issue, because mm. the business issue, we had it against each other. But at mm. the end, everything is a come back together, mm. embrace together. Mm. I think the Kenfo and the Bako, yeah. Hakka and the indigenous mm. culture, mm. you know, at that point, just like a, Everything makes sense to yeah. me, you know. Yeah, the the sort of marketing imperative, the the, the, the economic imperative, right? To make a living in this harsh environment mm-hmm. of of just mountains and narrow, mm-hmm. uh, non navigable valleys, mm. it forced people, mm. the Hakka and the indigenous people, really to work out how to live together right. mm-hmm. instead of constantly fighting with each other. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, hang on, guys, mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe we can make some money out of this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Hakka are pretty industrious and they had access to the markets. Right. And the mm. indigenous people had the skills to know how to grow things. Right. Mm. It's a match made in heaven, really. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's so, really That's cool. a good thing about the trail. It is one of sort of 
connection and inclusivity mm -hmm. more than you would think from reading history books, which often yes. just tell you about all oh, this this conflict between the mm -hmm. two the two different peoples. Yes. So but the reality is not like that at all. Uh, no. <laughs> Fun fact, the Hakka people refer to the god of Earth as Bagong, which in the Hakka language refers to the older brother of one's grandfather. The name given to the deity shows the Hakka's close feelings towards the god of Earth, treating him like a member of the family. But the other Bagong temples, sorry, by the way, could just be a rock, could yeah. they? The, the, I don't know, why would they choose a rock, do you think? To well, that's a, well, that's part of the like, Hakka culture. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like the same thing. It's like, a, you know, Hakka always moving around. Mm -hmm. you know? When mm -hmm. we move mm -hmm. around, not just carry our ancestors, the other thing is to carry uh, like our religion. Mm -hmm. One of our religions, the most important is the Bakong. So you bring this, this, this god would come from China right. originally? Uh, no, them, no, 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 no. The, the thing, the thing we've done is like, okay, when we go there, we were looking for one of the rocks, you mm -hmm. know, and then we will start to uh, play in the rock and mm -hmm. also asking, he said, okay, Bako, if you, you're happy with this rock, maybe, you mm -hmm. know, you can stay here, something uh -huh, like that. See, see. Yeah, stuff on that. Everything mm -hmm. is stuff on that. I noticed yeah. you were, um, whenever we went to one of these shrines, you mm -hmm. would pray. Uh, and I joined in with you actually you know, t from mm. time to time to make sure that we could actually photograph there. Right. It was just like oh, an yes. insurance policy. See, that's, right? that's one thing is like, uh, it's very important. Yeah. You have to like uh, respect. So mm. that's why yeah. I always ask the Bakong, I say, first, just like a greeting to the Bakong and tell him that is a uh, thank you very much to, to helping us. And mm. the mm. second part is like, uh, I want uh, Bakong to understand what are we doing right now, especially mm. for the crazy, you're the photographer. So that's why right. so uh, ask Did him you? to, you know, just uh, mm. don't mind, you know, we're taking the pictures and <laughs> yeah. like that. They didn't yeah. mind, did they? Yeah. It seems that you, no. you know how to talk to them. Do, yeah. you, do you think a lot of Hakka people understand this uh, to the degree that you do, do mm -hmm. you think that they are different in that way from other Taiwanese people? That they still understand and respect their ancestors, maybe more? Than I would say still, yeah, yeah but yeah. I'm not quite sure about more. Yeah, it really depends. But uh, along with the trail, um, mm. because it mostly is uh, with uh, like a uh, Haga village. Yeah. yeah, Hakka community. Oh, 90%, oh. right? Yeah, 90%. Right. Does that, that's why right. yeah. you see this kind of tradition still carry yeah. on. Yeah. For me, yeah. that was actually a very unusual mm. um, side of Taiwan to see. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's like the whole central mm -hmm. western part mm. of Taiwan is Hakka yeah. country. It's like a Hakka uh, land. <laughs> you know, you almost should issue passport or visas to come in. <laughs> and out. It's so different from the rest of Taiwan. And yet, if you look at it visually, it's... Uh, there are small details, maybe in architecture, mm, yeah. maybe in food, mm. uh, but there's not too much different in the actual faces of the people themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the jobs that they still do, their connection with mm. the landscape is quite unique. Right, that's true. Yeah. Mm, that's right. Okay, mm. you know what? Right before we say goodbye, you know, um, I also want to teach you another like a Hakka lesson mm. because you were saying that uh, first you are the photographer and yeah. second you're taking a lot of beautiful pictures. That every I, time. That's, like, that's an excuse for not being very good at languages, right? You know, Danny, because <laughs> I don't like talking to people. I just want to take their photographs. <laughs> talking no, is a distraction. Because I see <laughs> that you are so professional. Right. You right. know, you are you are kind of like a focus on oh, what you're focused. trying to do, yeah. you know. And and somehow, Too much sometimes. I, I always heard about that. You say, oh, so beautiful, so mm -hmm. beautiful, mm -hmm. so beautiful. That's why I'm thinking, maybe it's the time for me to teach oh, you the Haga okay. lesson. Another one for me to it, write down. Beautiful in mm -hmm. Haga. Okay. What do you think? Okay. Okay, go. good. Okay, let's go. Beautiful. Dong Jiang. Dong Jiang. Dong Jiang. Dong Jiang. Yeah, Dong Jiang. So this. It's a tonal language still, yes. isn't it? Mm -hmm. How many tones are there in Hakka, don't, by wow. the way? I, I, I don't know, but more, more definitely than, more than 10. More than, man, more than 10? Yes, oh more than God, 10. Is... Yes. <laughs> that's why that's the beauty yeah, of the Hakka. Yes. Yeah. Dong Jiang. Dong Jiang. Dong Jiang. Dong Jiang. Okay, very good. good. Do you think people, which, which uh, is that the uh, Shinju dialect? This or one is a Shinju dialect. It's your mm. dialect. Okay, yeah. maybe we can Dong do another one. It's like a Miaodi dialect. Okay, it's like a Dong Jiang. Similar. This Similar. One. Yeah. yeah huh? Say again. Dong Jiang. 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 Okay. Remember okay. first one. First we, one was this. Yeah. Dong Jiang. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this episode, I actually the, told you the true um, Haga, right? Two lesson. Mm. First one. Are we there? Yeah. Or are we there? Oh my goodness. 
，嗯，掉，啊，掉家，然后掉沙，掉沙，掉沙，抖吗？懂吗？懂吗 ？Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> I know. We know. Second we one is、uh, so beautiful. 懂江，懂江，懂江，懂江，懂江，�ong jiang. Very good. In, in, in the central. Oh, you're very polite. Yeah. Anyway, I'd like to thank everyone for listening in on this.、Uh, I hope you learned something about the secrets of the Lacanus Trail on this podcast. Yes.、Mm-hmm. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Secrets of the Lacanus Sailing Trail podcast.